The Finlands is an interesting region in eastern England that, at one time, was completely underwater. It is an area that is quite marshy, home to fertile agricultural soils, and has long been prone to flooding. Some of the first people to try and control this land were the Romans, so how fitting the area is now sometimes called the Holy Land of the English, due to the past presence of monasteries and modern churches. But for today's video, it is the setting of the childhood home of Formula One star George Russell. George Williams Russell was born on the day of the Roman festival of Lupercalia, also known as Better Valentine's Day, on the 15th of February 1998. Now, with these references to Rome, am I trying to allude to some type of semblance between it and George? No. However, his boss is called Wolf, so maybe something could be said here? But long before becoming a gladiator of Mercedes, George was born in Kings Lynn, Norfolk, and brought home by his parents Steve and Allison to their house in Wisbeach. He was born the youngest of three siblings, and his road to the Colosseum of F1 would be greatly influenced by his whole family. Shortly after George was born, his 11-year older brother Benji began racing carts. Not long after, his older sister Kara began riding horses as a hobby. But of course, George was far too young to have any opinions on his future. Some of his earliest memories were riding his pedal tractor around the family's garden. As he got older, he would bring the pedal tractor out to the track for the weekend as his brother raced. George grew up around the cart track because of his brother. When it was empty, he would pedal his tractor around the circuit. He even had a tanker he would use to fetch radiator water for some of the cart teams. Other times, he would go under team awnings and collect used tires, until once when he was four, he unknowingly stole a set of new ones. When he was a bit older, he finally got the opportunity to try his brother's cart, but there was no real epiphany of knowing this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. He had a Michael Schumacher uniform he would wear while riding his quad bike, but he wasn't a fan per se. He liked Michael because he won, and he liked Ferrari because of the red. But most of the time when his family were watching F1, he was just a kid playing in the background. But as he got a bit older, he caught the racing bug. Horses were cool and all, but he wanted to race carts just like his older brother. Benji Russell was a successful carter in his own right, winning championships across Britain and Europe. However, because he'd only started carting at age 12, when it came time to try and step up to single-seaters, he was nearly too old to find much help financially. The Russells were well off, but that type of racing was much too expensive for the family to afford. The patriarch Steve worked as a director for a local business, Dunn's Long Sutton Limited. Dunn's was a business in the agricultural sector, primarily operating in the preparation and distribution of seeds and pulses for consumption and farming. Pulses are essentially beans and peas. Some sources say this company was a small business, but of course everything is relative. Some documents I found said in 2010 the company made roughly 600k British pounds worth of profit. My point is, they weren't uber rich, but it wasn't a small corner store either. The matriarch of the family, Allison, had also served as both secretary and director of the business at certain points in time. When George turned seven, his parents bought him his own cart, and for about a year, his father took him on weekends to PF International Karting to practice until he was old enough to race. The family had the ability to support their children's hobbies, but it wasn't exactly easy. George can recall his father leaving for work at 7 and not returning until after 7 in the evening. Father not being home for dinner was not uncommon. Then, after working all week, he would take his sons to the track. Steve can remember in the early days sleeping in the freezing horse box to help save money until they decided to invest in a motorhome. The Russells had just spent nearly 10 years racing with Benji, and in that period they had learned a lot. How to set up carts, what to watch out for on track, and what type of people to generally avoid. Father played the role of mechanic and coach. Mother kept track of lap times and setup details in a little green notebook. Benji taught George a lot about racing, and Kara helped keep George focused and helped him stay in shape, a role she still keeps now even as her little brother has reached F1. The whole family was invested in his success, which was great. Unless the weekend went badly, then everyone was disappointed. Sometimes this could put a strain on the relationship between father and son, if father felt son wasn't taking things seriously enough. In his youth, George studied at the Wisbeach Grammar School, where he says he wasn't the best student. He'd like to sit at the back of the classroom and mess around with friends. 
In karts, George studied racing in a series known as Watching the Pennies. In his first two years, he performed decently, but there were no championship victories. However, in 2008, he'd win the British WTP Cadet Class, and then move on to the Coma Cadets. In 2009, he'd win three titles, and finish second in another. Throughout this time, George had a little rivalry with Ben Barnico, but mostly it was just about pure fun and the joy of victory. With his family's experience and George's talents, things came pretty naturally. His performance in the past years had gotten George a seat at the British Strawberry Racing Team supported by Tony Kart. And again, in 2010, George would win another three titles in the Mini Max class. His success would see him attending a test day for the Intrepid Kart Team. They were hosting a track day where up-and-coming racers would be tested by their factory drivers. Alexander Albon was about two years older than George, and he was Team Intrepid's world champion carter responsible for Russell's evaluation. He was impressed and recommended the manufacturer look into signing a deal with 13-year-old George. The following year would not be as successful as the past, but would still see him winning the Supercarts USA Junior Super Nationals. At this time, George was teammates with Charles Leclerc, and was competing with people like Max Verstappen, Esteban Ocon, Lance Stroll, and a bunch of other names that have been successful outside of F1. As such, they were pushing each other to perform better, and for 2012, George would take that push forwards and finish third in the Master Series, second in the USA Super Nationals and KF3 National Championship, and win both the KF3 Winter Cup and European Championship. About the same time, George dropped out of traditional schooling. Sure, he messed out on a few of the normal average teenage things, but at 14 he says he was still somewhat naive. He believed he was going to make it to Formula One, so missing out on a few normal things was no big deal. And obviously his father believed as well, because in order to cope with the increased costs of racing, he sold his part of the business to a larger agricultural conglomerate. Heading into 2013, Russell had an opportunity to join the Bureau ART kart team. They were the team to beat in shifter carts, but in the KF category, they only had three carts on a grid of 18, and they were sort of struggling. This would be the first hard year of his career. He didn't really win anything. He says he dealt with it fine, but maybe wrongly so, he blamed a lot of his lack of pace on the equipment instead of looking at himself to improve. He had always been successful, so why would that stop now? Must be the cart. And in 2014, maybe he was proven a bit correct. Still, being supported by his family, he made the jump into Formula 4. In his first year in cars, he would win the British F4 Championship with podiums in almost half the races, and victories in 5 out of 24. He'd also do a handful of races in the Formula Renault Euro Cup, winning one of his four starts. By year's end, he would participate in the GP3 test, and his manager managed to get the email of Mercedes boss Toto Wolff. Later that night, George would send him an email introducing himself, attached his racing CV, and said he hoped they would get the chance to meet in the future, and then went to bed. When he woke up, he had a response from Toto saying that he would like to meet, set it up with his personal assistant, and they would speak almost two months later. George showed up in a suit with a PowerPoint presentation on why he was a good candidate for the Mercedes Junior program. Afterwards, Toto liked him, wished him good luck, and said they would keep an eye on him. This wasn't his first contact with a Formula 1 operation. Two years prior, he was in a group of young carters invited by Red Bull to do some simulator testing, but there was no further contact, so he figured that ship had sailed. Ultimately, the Russells were running out of money, but luckily for 2015, there were two offers to race in Formula 3. Volkswagen would pay for the engines if he raced for Carlin, and Mercedes would pay for the engines if he raced for Mucca Motorsports. After testing with both, George contacted Toto, thanked him for the opportunity, and said he would be driving with Carlin. He felt more comfortable with a British team than a German one. Toto said he thought he was making a mistake, but they would stay in touch. Heading into the season, George studied video, data, and wrote down how drivers approached each corner. And maybe it paid off in the beginning, because he won the second round of the first weekend. However, for the rest of the year, he says it was his toughest in racing. He only scored two further podiums and finished sixth in the championship. But throughout the year, he was busy trying to drive like other people. Russell was teammates with a highly rated Antonio Giovinazzi, but in their Carlin, even Gio was struggling to compete for the championship. 
The Prima Power Team was by far the strongest, and eventual winner Felix Rosenquist was in his sixth year of F3 experience. George had to learn to be satisfied with relative victories, but he also had to learn how to improve himself. Sure, they had a car disadvantage, but his teammate was outscoring him by double points. It was one of his hardest years, but probably the one he learned the most about improving in racing and improving his outlook and perspective on how good he was versus actually how hard it is to be successful at that level. If it wasn't for his engine deal in F3 paying for a large amount of the budget, George probably wouldn't have been racing, at least not with Carlin. But during that year, due to his award-winning performance in 2014, he received the opportunity to drive a McLaren F1 car at Silverstone. And then a month later, he was invited by BMW to a DTM test day at Jerez. At the test, George would be quicker than the factory driver, and half a second faster than the other invitees. BMW drew up a contract, be reserve driver in 2016, and then 2017 become one of their full-time entries in DTM. For once, instead of paying to race, George would be getting paid. He was almost ready to sign, but wanted some time to think about it. Signing with BMW would probably mean the end of his F1 correspondence with Mercedes. While at home, in the bath, he received a phone call from Gwen Legru, who had just been appointed the head of the Mercedes Junior Driver program, and George was the first person he called. If he joined, Merck would support him in F3, do well, F2, do well, then Formula 1. He took the invitation and started doing simulator work for the team, and for 2016 would be driving an F3 for the new high-tech Grand Prix team. Over the year, George would have a handful of DNFs, only two finishes outside of the points, nine podiums, two victories, and finished third in the championship. However, this was another relative victory. He had done well in the new team, but the field was destroyed by Lance Stroll and the Prima Power team. For the next year, George was moved into GP3 with ART Grand Prix. The team was experienced, and he would get podiums in half the races, four victories, and handily win the championship. Towards the end of the year, he made his first free practice appearances for Force India at Brazil and Abu Dhabi. The following year, he was with ART again, but now in F2. There was a bit of a slow start, but by year end, he had podiums in almost half the races, and wins in over a quarter. With two races left in the year, it wasn't official that George would be champion, but it was pretty likely. In F1, a seat had opened at Williams, and Mercedes were doing their best to negotiate him a contract. In opposition was a driver bringing large amounts of sponsor money, which the team desperately needed. With this in mind, the party signed a tight contract that gave Williams a lot of the bargaining power. After being F2 champion, in 2018, he moved into the Williams team alongside Robert Kubica, and two years after that was teammates with Nicholas Latifi. On average performance, George comprehensively beat his teammates, and considering the pace of the car, some days that was all he could really hope to achieve. Again, it was looking for relative victories. He had the opportunity to learn without the pressure of competition, but also there was a lack of reference points to compare his evolution. So he started competing with himself for faster lap times, and only being so few seconds behind the field. In two races he could finish in the same place, but one weekend he was ecstatic, in the other he was massively disappointed. As the car started to improve, George put on some impressive performances, especially in qualifying. Then, in the 2020 Secure Grand Prix, he had the opportunity to fill in for the sick Lewis Hamilton. Going into the race, he felt no pressure. If he did poorly, oh well, it was an unexpected event. However, when he did well, almost competing for victory, if not for a flat tire, it showed to anyone who doubted him he was ready to compete to win. Attempts were made to get him out of his Williams contract early, but with the tight stipulations drawn at the beginning, there were no loopholes. Then finally, in 2022, he would join Mercedes F1, ready to compete for championships. However, upon joining, the team isn't in the same place competitively. In his first year, he scored some podiums, and even the only win for the team. But what he can do fighting for a championship has yet to be seen. But he believes in Mercedes, the team believes in him, and you can believe when the chance comes, he will fight for it. George Russell, you are a Formula One race winner.
So as usual, thank you greatly for watching this video, and for the continued support to everyone who watches, subscribes, comments, and shares these things around. Everything helps, so if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. Then, for my next video, I'm making it hard on myself. I usually don't do retired drivers, but he's only semi-retired. I mean, he's raced within the last few weeks. He's one everywhere. He's afraid of no one. He's one of my favorites, and if he's on track, he's one to watch. So if you have a guess whom it is, leave one below, and I'll see you next time on Driver Profiles. Russell was teammates with the highly radiate, highly radiated, Antonio Giovinazzi. Russell was teammates with the highly radiated Dasamagun.